JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones and in the news, inmate fatally shot after attempting to disarm correctional officer. An inmate from the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center was admitted to a public health facility, was fatally shot when he attempted to disarm a correctional officer while being escorted to the bathroom. The disclosure was made by the Department of Correctional Services via a press release. The incident occurred about 6.50 a.m. on Sunday. According to a source, the prison was epileptic and was regularly taken to the facility for treatment. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, and the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, are investigating the matter. Killed Defending Friends Honor It's over a man, but it's not Jerry Dean's man. A relative of Jerry Dean Grant, otherwise called Kim, the 26-year-old woman who was stabbed to death, during an alleged altercation with another woman in Spalding, carried on on Friday, says the public's view of her cousin's death is hurting the grieving family. Reports from the Spalding police are that at about 2.15 p.m., Grant was armed with a knife, pounced upon the other woman as she was walking along a roadway. A tussle ensued and Grant was subsequently stabbed in the upper body. The police were alerted and upon arrival, Grant was transported to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Kenya Grant so that the family's grief is compounded by the fact that Jerry Dean's daughter is celebrating her seventh birthday today. Kenya added that the celebratory mood in the family has also been dampened despite her getting married last night. According to Kenya, the dispute which claimed the life of her cousin stemmed from a love triangle. She said, however, the man at the center of the dispute is a boyfriend of Jerry Dean's friend. It's over a man, but it's not Jerry Dean's man. Jerry Dean got pulled in like a bait. She's my relative, but it's so dumb. It's one of the dumbest ways to die. This not have nothing to do with her, and she lost her life because of this, said Kenya, adding that her cousin had followed bad company. It's not Geraldine's battle. She's not fighting over a man for herself. Geraldine Grant is friends with another female who is at work the suspect, which is an ongoing fight. She's a third party in the fight. On Thursday, the person who killed Geraldine Grant beat up Geraldine's friend. So what the friend did was bring Geraldine in it the next day, which was Friday. Geraldine is wrong. She shouldn't have gone to the place, but she got pulled into the fight, Kenya said. Kenya has also challenged the police to support that Geraldine was armed with a knife. She alleges that Geraldine's friend had called the suspect, indicating that they were at her home for revenge. Geraldine never had a knife. The suspect had a knife. The suspect allegedly purchased the knife because Geraldine's friend called her and told her they were at her home. They actually waited at the suspect's home for her, so she left work early to go home, claimed Kenya. Kenya says despite the grief, as the family grapples with the news of her cousin's tragic and untimely death, Geraldine is also culpable of blaming her demise. She's already dead, but I'll give her two slaps. To be very honest, I don't even blame the suspect. She could have taken a different approach, but Geraldine's friend pulled Geraldine into it, and the friend aggravated the situation. I have to be fair. She pulled Geraldine into a battle that she lost the day before, then Ron left Geraldine, said Kenya, further claiming that her cousin was attacked by more than one woman. Kenya said Geraldine had plans to bask in the usual Christmas Eve festivities, having already purchased outfits for herself and her daughter and had done extra shopping for her daughter's birthday today. Elderly man dies after crashing into signpost on a motorcycle. 61-year-old Linton Watkins offered for a district in Westmoreland died as a result of injuries he sustained in a motor vehicle crash on the Torrington Main Road in the parish on Saturday, December 24. Reports from the San Fermar police are that about 8.30 p.m., Watkins was driving a motorcycle when he attempted to navigate a turn and lost control of the motorcycle, which collided into a sign post. The police were summoned and Watkins was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations continue into the incident. Police Commissioner warns against gun salute. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson is warning against gun salutes during the Christmas season. General Anderson says gun salutes are illegal and persons who engage in the practice can be charged under the New Farms Act. You do not want to be using your gun whether illegal or legal in any way, just no gun salutes. Commissioner Anderson says gun salutes are illegal and persons who engage in the practice can be charged under the New Farms Act. You do not want to be using your gun whether illegal or legal in any way, just no gun salutes. In the meantime, the commission says the police will be patrolling town centers to ensure persons are safe during the holiday period. We'll be out there to create a safe environment for people 
were going about their entertainment. Majority of Trelawney murders committed this year solved, police say. The Trelawney police says the majority of murders committed in the parish since the start of the year have been solved. Head of the Trelawney police, Deputy Superintendent Winston Milton, says the division was severely affected by murders during the first two quarters of the year. He says 38 murders have been recorded in the division so far this year. More than 60% of them have been cleared up. Overall, we are seeing a 61% clear up of serious and violent crimes, and that speaks really to the commitment and capabilities of our investigative team. Put the spirit of Christmas back into the celebrations, says PM Holness. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, in his Christmas message to Jamaicans, urged criminals to heed the example of Christ, turn from their destructive ways, and celebrate life instead of taking life. Warm Christmas greetings as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father so loved us that he gave us his only Son to manifest as a beacon amongst us to show us the way to eternal life, a precious gift of perfect life, that whoever believes and accepts Christ, our soul will not perish, but be saved for eternity. Above all else, therefore, Christmas is the celebration of life, the beginning of the human life of Jesus and the promise of eternal life. At the time of the nativity, God's chosen people, as described in the Bible, were colonized by an oppressive power. Times were hard. They were in a historical struggle to find a homeland in which they could be free. They had faith that a Messiah, a powerful leader, would come and lead them out of their material and physical bondage and bring an end to the national turmoil of the time. However, Jesus did not come into this world as a mighty king. He was born into lowly circumstances, in a stable, to poor parents, and he would grow up to be a humble carpenter. From his birth and throughout his life, Jesus was an example of humility, kindness, selflessness, love, peace, and hope. He did not come into this world to be an earthly king to liberate a nation or satisfy the material wants of a people. He came to show the world the path to salvation and be the personal savior of all who believe. Today, the meaning of Christmas has become highly materialized and less so a time when we refresh ourselves spiritually. The hustle and bustle to acquire the material symbols of the season can often reach a frenzy where our very lives are threatened. Drunk driving and speeding are significant contributors to road fatalities during this season. As of 6 a.m. Tuesday, December 20th, 461 lives would have been lost to road traffic incidents. Last year, 487 persons lost their lives to road traffic incidents. No more of our brothers and sisters should die on our roads during this season. Crashes are preventable. It depends on our mindset and behavior. So let us act with greater care. Don't drink and drive. Follow the rules of the road. Wear your helmets. Drive within the limits. Drive defensively. Drive according to the condition of the road and slow down. As we celebrate life this Christmas, let us all commit to being extra careful as road users. Please, I urge you, take it easy on the road. Slow down and live to celebrate your life. Now, we all want to have the merriment of Christmas. We all want to be able to take our children to Grand Market, buy our family gifts, have a Christmas Day meal of our favorite meats with gungo rice and peas, sorrel and cake, or just to visit our parents and give them a little money, even if it's the only time we get to do it. 
We all want the material symbols of the season. Some of us do not want to acquire these material symbols through lawful means. Unfortunately, some are planning to rob and kill, taking the lives of others, just to be able to floss at the popular parties of the season. The message of peace, goodwill, and the celebration of life means nothing to those with criminal intent. They have hardened their hearts. Last year, December, 127 Jamaicans lost their lives to intentional fatal violence. Your government recognizes the emergency situation and has utilized emergency powers to save lives. The measures have been working well to reduce the number of murders. Nevertheless, as believers in the salvation of Christ, we appeal to the killers, the robbers, extortionists, and scammers to heed the message of the season and the example of Christ. Turn from your destructive ways and celebrate life instead of taking life. The greatest gift is life, the gift from God. We don't need material things to value life or to make our life valuable. And we don't need to be rich to secure our soul. This Christmas, let us all reflect on the life of Jesus and his message of peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Let us use the pause in our regular activities to reset our mental and spiritual connections with our families and friends and with God, however we perceive him. Let us appreciate each other and love each other. Let us be kind to those who are in need and mindful of those who are alone. Jesus gave us a message of love, joy, hope, and peace. The message does not change from year to year. So let us put the spirit of Christmas back in our celebrations. I wish for my Jamaican people, both here and abroad, a wonderful, safe, hopeful, joyful, and peaceful Christmas filled with lots of love and hugs. And remember, take nothing for granted and always look after your personal safety. Have a safe and holy Christmas. Mark Golding, leader of the Opposition People's National Party, PMP, in his Christmas message, urges all Jamaicans to remember that Christmas is a time of love and happiness. At this most wonderful time of the year, families all around the world are brought together by the spirit of Christmas. It's the season of hope and joy, inspired by Christ's universal message of peace on earth and goodwill to all men. As we come together to celebrate Christmas, we demonstrate the beautiful reality that, despite any differences, we are all connected by the shared common bond of our humanity. Christmas is a time of love and happiness, and we in Jamaica love to come together to enjoy the season in our own special way. We love with sorrel, with Christmas cake, with gungo rice and peas, and with fresh, cool Christmas breeze. But Christmas is not only about the food and the festivities. The true joy of Christmas resides in the spirit of giving with which it comes. Many Jamaicans look forward to the Christmas treats for the elderly and the children, the food drives for the homeless, touching the lives of our most vulnerable in a caring way. This is the true spirit of Christmas. And we give thanks for the beautification of our streets and our communities, often providing some employment and a little Christmas money for many who need it most. As we indulge in the season's festivities, I encourage you to do so with caution. In particular, road fatalities are running at an alarming rate in our country. So please, proceed with care on the road. When I reflect on this passing year, I have to salute the tremendous character and resilience of our people. Each of you who teach, who lead, who protect us, who care for us, or who serve our great nation in many big and small ways, I salute you. 
to our security forces and the Jamaica Fire Brigade, who endure long and harrowing conditions of duty in an effort to keep this nation safe. We thank you for your service and your sacrifice. To our healthcare workers who have bravely taken care of the sick among us, your courage and dedication have earned our deepest gratitude and respect. To our teachers and educators who have adapted to new models of learning after two years of a pandemic, we are truly grateful for your vital role in assuring the future of our nation. And to our civil servants and our other public sector workers, you play such a significant role in the growth and development of our nation. We honor your service to nation building. To all the people of this blessed island of Jamaica, let us celebrate this Christmas holiday by showing love, compassion, and care for each other. Remember the essential message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that we are our brother's keeper. So let us commit ourselves to showing love in the true spirit of Christmas. And as we look forward to the new year, let us forge ahead with unity and purpose. At the level of our political leaders, let us treat each other with respect and seek to build a common understanding of how to tackle the major challenges facing our people. There is so much more around which we can unite for the progress of our nation than there is to divide us. To those Jamaicans who have lost family members this year and for whom this Christmas falls on heavy hearts, I pray that you may find strength and comfort during this season by focusing on the joyous message of Christmas. On behalf of my own family and the family of the People's National Party, I wish all Jamaicans at home and abroad a very Merry Christmas and a safe and joyous holiday season. One. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.